Oshio. I'm sorry, it's from 2009 until now. Here in February of 2012, I'm finally getting around to part three. You know, things happen, you know, things come and go and whatever you, and, and you get sidetracked, and it don't take much these days for me to get sidetracked, so I'm not a young puppy anymore. But anyway. And if you hear any background noise, please just ignore it. It's Gimli and Rio. That's the two furry boys with four legs. <laughs> and I'm probably going to be bumping the camera. I'm staying around a little bit. But first, before I continue this, and it, uh, this should be only four parts. This should be part four of part four. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, now part one is more like an encouraging word type thing. Part two is where I really get into my testimony and and, and this I'm hoping I will finish it. And understand before I get started is I'm going to leave a lot out. Now this is not a book. This is just about what Jesus did for me, alright? Now, it is easy to get sidetracked, you know, and I can't remember times and dates specifically. These days, I sometimes get one day mixed up with another. It could be a Wednesday, and I'm thinking it's Friday. Go figure. But anyway, uh, the thing is, uh, is to let you know it's not hopeless. There is hope. Whether you have never known Jesus, or you have and you fell away. But I want to start out with a passage of Scripture uh, which is relevant to what I'm fixing to tell you. Okay. Alright, now, here it goes. In Luke, chapter 15, verse 11. Now, this is relevant to a, a majority of you, as well as, as it has been for me. And, uh, you know... This says a lot, I mean, in itself. If you want to know what compassion and mercy is, you know, all you got to do is read the Word of God, the Book of Heaven, the Bible. You read it. You know, and understand this, you know, there's a lot of people who will come against you and and call you things or or what have you and want to argue and say, there is no God, let's debate, you know, and all this. And uh, religious people who, and I say religious people who, that is, their religion consists of man-made theology, man-made theology and traditions of man that they have incorporated in the church. But let's keep this in mind. You know, there's only one true religion, and you will read about that in uh, James. Read it. Read the whole book of James, and you will find it there. There's only one true religion. Someone said once, says, I love Jesus and hate religion. Well, what they should have said was, clarified that more clearly said I love Jesus but hate man made religion there is a difference there is only one true religion but I didn't let's get on with this okay all right let's start with uh, verse 11 on chapter 15 of Luke and he said a certain man and that is he Jesus and he Jesus said a certain man had two sons, and the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falleth to me. And he divided unto them his living. And understand, for a Jew uh, to, you know, in this scenario, that was the same saying, uh, you know, you're, I'm, cut myself off from you and, and you know, I'm, I'm dead to you. 
you know, you're dead to me and things. But I'm not going to get into all that. But I understand that thought because the boy had some problems. He was greedy and selfish. And he was young, and he wanted to party. He wanted to live life because he was tired of the way things was every day. You know, he didn't know how good he had it. But keep that in mind. All right, it says, And not many days, verse 13, And not many days after, the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country, and there wasted his substance with riotous living. When he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in the land, and he began to be in want, in need. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent him into his field to feed swine. Now, I remind you, this is a Jew. Swine. Hmm? This is how bad it got for him. And he would fain have filled his belly with the husk that the swine did eat. You know, he was thinking about, you know, it was looking good. What the swine, the pigs were eating, it was looking good. And no man gave unto him. Verse 17, And when he came to himself, he said, How many hired servants? He didn't say slaves. Hired servants, bond servants. How many hired servants of my fathers have bread enough and to spare, and I perish with hunger? I will arise and go to my father, and will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee, and I am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. And he arose and came to his father. But when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. His father had been waiting for him, looking for him to return. Remember, in this parable, the father, the allegory, the representation is of our heavenly father, God. And the son said unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight, and am no worthy to be called thy son. But listen to the compassion, the mercy, the love. And, but the father said to his servants, Bring forth the best robe, and put it on him. And put a ring on his hand, and shoes on his feet. And bring hither the fatted calf and kill it. And let us eat and be merry. For this my son was dead. And is alive again. He was lost. And is found. And they began to be merry. I tell you, that, that is very powerful to me because God had mercy on me and he can have mercy on you. And you can read the rest of that parable and how it talks about the other brother, the one who didn't leave. But you can see the arrogancy, you know, and things and you can relate this your life how you know especially you who fell away and you have all kinds of excuses like Adam and Eve they had their excuses Adam was approached first why because he was the head 
when when he was approached by God and then wanted to kind of lay it all on God saying you know hey look you know you gave me this woman that was her who did it you gave her to me and she caused me to do it and then Eve when she was approached and confronted the devil made me do it so to speak the serpent did it but see the thing is there's that thing that goes on constantly about laying blames on this one and that when we have to look in ourselves you can say that the church people or that preacher wasn't doing right but you have to stop to think about this who is really to blame now I'm going to leave a lot of things out it'll take forever this is not a book this is not a uh, one of these two and three hour documentaries autobiography type things you know if I wrote this in book a book it would take me forever it would be a volume probably about that thick but let me just say now in part two you know you and, you know uh, in three you know you know about the military and things but understand this I had been in church and stuff before when I was younger but because uh, let me just put it this way to save time I'd seen things in the church you know and I was really strong I had came to Jesus when I was 13 I was out in a barn you know and you know I had sit there and saw this one movie uh, the greatest story ever told and it shook me and it made me look at myself so anyway I um, I sat there and um, took a good look at my life then wasn't much one I'm 13 but I tell you uh, at 13 I had a real potty mouth and, and stuff and everything but you know I I would like a lot of kids a lot of boys who make fun and, and sorry about that people Gimli's over here he's a pretty good sized dog now okay he's a big dog and he is stout and strong good dog but he can alright but anyway as I was uh, going on here I would just like any other kid but I went out to the barn you know I really even though I'd been in church you know with my parents from time to time but when I was about 11 and a half or 12 I think it was about when I was 12 my father quit making us go to church because when we reached a certain age it was up to us if we wanted to go or not of course I had no desire for it you know just like any other young people they don't really want to go you know they don't really care about that you know you want to have fun but anyway uh, I'm getting off the subject but I have my background but the thing uh, was is that because uh, as I went on I really had loved God and was on fire for God and things and but ended up I started allowing my eyes to drift my ears to catch things I shouldn't have been listening to and seeing the things that was going on in church and I saw eventually got to be I got discouraged and things and didn't like it and ended up laying a, a little blame but it was kind of a gradual process downhill but anyway uh, let's get on with it but uh, then I was in the service and everything well like I was telling you, you know, um, you know I was out there with the, the dogs and uh, everything but the thing is now I understand this is kind of hard for me there's a lot of this stuff I do not want to dredge up and I'm not going to give you details is I am thankful for what Jesus did for me okay you know this is the whole point you know for me to you know to finish this story up 
to let you in on what God really done for me. Because there's things, th this brings up bad memory, and I don't like drudging things up. To always, you know, it's bad enough, you know, that I had made an error in my life, but I have to sit there and say this. I'm finally at a point where I need to let you know what God can do for you. It's not impossible. It's not hopeless. A lot of you are prodigal sons and daughters. See, God had just let me loose. And I had to learn my lessons. So finally I had to see the need. But, uh, anyway, I had, uh, you know, got rescued from there, but I I had ran on. Uh, I made it all for the uh, uh, base, and uh, and I had to, I forgot, it was somewhere like when I got to the main road, the highway out there, and I can't remember the name of the highway, but uh, I, think it was, uh, I was heading towards, uh, I think, St. Louis, that way, but anyway, I was heading that way, and uh, I never got a ride, it was started to sleet, it was, it was cold started to sleet and, and snow mix and a little rain and stuff, you know, and all I had was my field jacket. You know, I, I you know, it had a liner and everything in it, but, you know, I was getting wet and stuff and I was cold and I got sick. And it, I was barely made it and I, I forgot how, it was like 20, maybe 30 miles or so, I can't remember specifically, I remember it was a long ways, I had to walk and all that. But I, there was a motel, and I went over, and I was about ready to drop. And, uh, you know, I was, I wanted to warm myself up, you know. And uh, But anyway, when I went in, I couldn't think or anything. And uh, the man and his wife who owned the place saw that I was, had it. I was bleeding out of the nose and stuff and uh, coughing and hacking and stuff. And the man... You know, said he'd give me a room and stuff, you know, and, and, and start asking me my name. And I was kind of like a little afraid to give him my name, right? But finally, uh, he says, it don't matter. He says, if you was my son, I, I, you know, I could not allow you to go on any further. So he said, you need help. So he put me and his wife helped me to a room. But obviously, they went through my billfold and they saw a uh, home phone number and he called and it was my parents so he called them and they came and and stuff and uh, you know uh, my father my da had offered to pay the man he refused it he says if it was my son I would want somebody to care for my son it was God I didn't stop it I mean I knew in part about this but it was being pushed back, you know, and and then you know got home and ended up got better. That was the mercy of God. I could have died, but anyway, to go on. You know, time went on. Uh, finally, you know, it was a matter of a court martial and and all of this, right? Well, um, you know yourself. You go a wall and stuff. Any of you been in the military, you know what you're looking at. But thanks to prayer people had prayed and stuff because uh, I had to go back and there was no way I was prepared to kill myself I mean that was how bad it was for me but what happened God's mercy because again I didn't stop to consider it all uh, in you know uh, was they found a lawyer a civilian lawyer who managed without me having to go he made phone calls there was no court no nothing fixed it where I didn't have to go back they fixed it you know they said uh, you know we'll just fix it like he'd never been here and uh, you know and if he wants to uh, come back and in, into the military he has to be a lot older you know and mind set right here you know at another time that's the way they fixed it <laughs> well, I wouldn't have to go back you know but that's that is also something what Jesus did for me but I was 
just got to a point where I was really falling apart. Now, hear this. Um, <laughs> you know, I had, I was so messed up, you know, I, I mean, I, I was more, I had a lot of more anger in me, and, uh, I wanted, I didn't like it, I mean, I was so paranoid, I got to a point where I wanted to kill people, not just anybody, you know, I mean, anyone I saw in uniform, uh, any of that kind of stuff, I was really, I had a lot of anger, and, uh, you know, I started seeing counselors and psychiatrists and things, but, uh, and, oh, you know, eventually, you know, I managed to, you know, I, I'm, for sake of time, I'm, I'm just moving on here, but I eventually learned about trying to curb that, you know, doing violence, because I had to learn uh, that, you know, you had to, you know, thanks to a counselor, made me think that I had to uh, visualize the outcome of things. Not to be fantasize a fictional account, but a, a real account what would happen if I did this. If you did A, B, or C would result, you know, and on and on. But anyway... You know, and I'd been in and out of uh, hospitals, uh, you know, because I was having a hard time coping thing with things, but anger was growing up in me. I even hated church. I hated Christians. I started hating them. Anyone bring up, it was a tax city. You know, it was, they're the evil ones and stuff. You know, a lot of you people think, I don't understand what it's like. You're wrong. I've been there. I probably was a lot more violent than you. A lot more hatred in my heart than you. Maybe you have more. But it's not about, oh, I was more hateful than you. And no, I'm more hateful. No, no, no. You're missing the point. This is about what Jesus did for me. So, I had allowed all this to build up in me. And I did not want to have anything to do with church. Now this is the hard part. I did a lot of things in my life that I am not proud of and I do not even want to even really discuss. I'm not going to, that is, I'm not going to go into details. Alright, I just want you to keep this in mind. Now, you know, psychiatrists and doctors and peer pressures. It's amazing what it'll do to you. And what the general media can say, what's the general consensus? What is the popular thing? Well, I started listening to these doctors, you know, my problem has been I must be feminine, you know, but I must be gay and all this. Now understand, I know this one thing, it doesn't matter if you're uh, claiming to be a transgender, bisexual, trisexual, whatever sexual you want to call it, it's still homosexuality. It's still the same. It's, and it's wrong. Now, in my mind, in the back, like in a little corner, I knew that this was not correct, but you know, but everything was seem so alluring and it sounded like, this makes sense. You know, I started allowing myself to get, you know, that makes sense. Started trying to, you know, view their logic, and it must be right. You know, they're smarter than me. So, whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm sorry about that. The, uh, Gimli. So, anyway, I had, uh, started getting to a point where I started believing that. And then, next thing you know, I'm leaving a lot of things out. I started getting into that lifestyle as well as I started dabbling into the occult and I found with the occult and stuff there was things like the people who get in the wicked and they tell you how good it is there's the good side don't believe it and they don't want to debate you and they know they're wrong and they can't uh, not all of them know that they're wrong but uh, there's a good some of them 
But there are some that though, they like with people in homosexuality, they convince themselves, they listen to the lies and convince themselves of the lie because the devil tells them to whisper it. It's not a homosexual demon that comes in and possesses them and causes them to be that way. Understand a man's heart, what's in their heart. It's only by the grace of God and strength and determination and stuff that you're not out there, you know, doing those things if you're not homosexual or, or whatever. The thing is, my, my point is, demons influence people. They don't make you do anything. But you leave the door open, and that, well, I did. I left the door wide open. But I did start seeing things, in, like for when, with the Wicca, I seen, started seeing things, and knowing you know, there was something not quite right about it, which I thought was, it sounded good, it looked good in black and white on paper and stuff, and seeing one and listening to other people's uh, uh, testimony, oh, how great it is. It's, it's evil. You're being deceived if you get in that. But anyway, I, find I, I managed, was fortunate enough to get out, but then I still had this other. It was evil. Uh, you know, and that, that lifestyle that I was living, and this went on for years. Now this is tough for me to talk about and I don't want to even bring it up ever again. It's just that God did some great things for me. Now remember I did not have uh, any thoughts about Jesus or God or, 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 or church. I did not want to have it. If I seen a Christian even more so in that lifestyle that I was living even more so I did not want to have to do with a Christian. Even online if I saw someone or someone tried to test, I would, oh, the things I would say, and I'm ashamed of it today. But let me tell you something. These people who say, once you're this way, you're never out of it. They're liars. And if you listen to them, you're going to be just like Adam and Eve, deceived. You know, and, and like everyone else throughout time, you, you're going to be deceived. They're blind guides, whether they're in religious or not. They're blind. And the thing is, they're blind. And the blind leads the blind. And they're all falling into the ditch, the pit. Leave them alone. Don't listen to them. Cut them off. You only need to hear and think about things that are noble, pure, and good, and honest, and godly, the, the, those things that are beautiful, not ugly with hate. But I want to tell you, my life was filled with that. When I wasn't even looking, I didn't step inside a church door, I wouldn't have had nothing to do with it. I hated it, you know, I, I was starting to a point where evolution was right and, and all this was wrong and and all this, and I had the deepest, darkest hate and stuff, you know. And uh, But one day I went into a library, a small library. We lived in a small little town, and, uh, you know, and like I said, I am leaving a lot out, and I'm not going to go through it. I'm trying to get to the main point. This is kind of a long testimony anyway. <coughs> Excuse me. But like I was saying, this is a long testimony anyway. So, in that old town, in that little library, I had uh, sit there and uh, was looking for something to read because we just got rid of there wasn't very much in there. But I, I saw something, you know, I knew it was a fiction, uh, you know, I got to asking about it, you know, and it's called the Left Behind series. And no, I'm not plugging them. It's just, you know, it's just a fiction book, uh, you know. But I had sat there and, um, well, okay, I'll, I'll read the series, you know, and I, and I did. But let me tell you something. Wasn't in no church. I, 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 I had somebody coming over witnessing to me. I was the prodigal. who came to the end, who had to come and snap too, to take a good 
stock of myself. I got to thinking and from what I was seeing about where when I was reading these books I began to start thinking about my life. If I die, where was I going? And then bam, it just flooded those little things that was up in the little corner of the mind is bam and I realized then everything I've been through you know God had kept his hand and he could have let me die many times there was other times I could have died but let me tell you something I realized I was a lost soul. My heart was so heavy and so heartbroken. I blubbered like a baby. No holds barred, I just bawled out. And even those who knew me knew they saw that there was this change, the people that I used to hang with. They even hated me because I, I drew a line because I gave my heart all back to Jesus. The mercy of God. And that was back when that happened. It was back in the year 2001. It was around close, getting close to the end of the year, the end, around the end of summer. So... And I thank God for that mercy. It was hard for me to mention these things. But don't let somebody tell you that you're doomed to be whether a drunkard, a, 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 an adulterer, un, you're doomed to be that unfaithful person. Don't be one telling people that they're doomed to be that one. Don't be the victim in it neither. Don't be that. There is hope. Listen, I am just a common, everyday worm. But God had mercy on me. I've done vile things in my life. Terrible things. On the other side, it's ugly. Things can look beautiful and attractive and maybe even seem a little fun at the time. But it gets all you get burned on it. And you know what? Let me tell you this. Back in from 2001 to this day, I have not had a desire for those things. Not even tempted, tested with those things. I know what it's like. I've been there. And I'm trying to, to, to let you know what Jesus did for me and what He can do for you. It's not hopeless. If you want to share this to let others know that it's not hopeless, please do so. Because there is hope. Don't be fooled, okay? You know, a lot of people want to go along with the crowd. And then you're, I've seen where these foolish young people in the churches who sit there and think they got to go along with the flow because God is a modern God and we got to go along with it. And we, you know, no, you, you don't know what to do and you want to be free and, and, and whatever. But, you know, you, you, if you don't snap yourself out, you might not never come out. You'll be told, oh, you can't go back over there. You know, God ain't going to want you back, not after the things you did. God is real and He loves you. There's nothing impossible for God. Read the Gospels again. Read about that love and mercy. The delivering power of Jesus. Read the book of Acts. See how God set people free. Jesus went about doing good. And he preached the gospel. He didn't get out and just preach. He didn't just preach. You preachers out there who's coming against this sin, you better stop and think about where you were. And you better get rid of your gimmicks 
and you better start preaching just the gospel and living your life in front of them. Do the good deeds, the works of God and deliver the message. Don't get out there and hang a hand on a holler around and point at them saying, you sinner, you wicked, vile person. You think they're going to listen to you? No. You're casting pearls, treasure to the dogs and swine when you do that. Deliver the good news of Jesus. Be like Jesus. Walk like Jesus. There is hope. Hmm. Remember that. That's why I do get upset when preachers get up and people get around and, and get out and start condemning everyone outside of the body of Christ. That they, they, they condemn them and, and judge them and, and, and slam them. And, and, and I see the preachers him haul around and not wanting to, to some of them don't even want to get out there and, and, uh, and, and, and tell these street preachers sit down until you learn how to be like Jesus you got to confront sin but you ain't got to get out there and drive per people into further sin you be a light Jesus said to be a light, like a light on a city. If you're out in the darkness and there's light, you know, you want to get out where you can see. Instead of being in the dark and feeling your way around, you want to see that light. Be the light. Let them be the mall. You be the flame. Let God's flame inside of you draw them in. Think about it. That was my testimony. I won't repeat it again. Because that's hard enough, just enough that I can say that God deliver me. This is what Jesus did for me. And he can do it for you. Sorry for being so long, but it could be longer. And I don't want to go into all that. But he can set you free. God bless you. Shalom. He's a mighty God. Come home, prodigal son or daughter. My sleep is gone, my heart is full of sorrow I can't believe how much I've let you down I dread the pain that waits for me tomorrow When the sun reveals my broken dreams scattered on the ground Please forgive me I need your grace to make it through All I have is you I'm at your mercy And Lord, I'll serve you Yes, I will Until my dying day And help others find the way At your mercy Forgive me I can't believe The God of earth And glory Would even take the time To care for no sinner born I mean But you know I read In the Bible 